see two of them. You too. Brother Dennis. Brad Joe from Lily Long's house for watching the uh watching his birds come in. The old bird race today. There they come. There goes two. Just trapping them in. Yeah. His first two birds are trapping in. My first time being They already stepped on the backs, didn't they? On the pad? I don't know if that one's mine, though. Is one, is one of them yours? Yeah. That one's not mine. That one's not yours? He went in. That first one made good time though, didn't it? Yeah. So he should be in the lead then. Because it's not 12 12 yet. Oh, he's, what time is it? It was, I don't know what time it is. It's 11.58. You hear me? So the time he had to beat was uh, 1,300 yards per minute, I think. And it was 12-12. Uh, we had to beat 12-12. It's 11.58. So I think that bird is in the lead. Is that is both those birds yours? No. Only one? Yeah, I'm going to give it some more than let it go. OK. How long is this race? Uh, 232 miles. 232 miles. Pry is the winner right there. We don't know. I know. I'm short, guys. So Joe's a little, Joe's the guy that's mentoring me and helping me. And also, he's a very good, experienced flyer, but he's also a longer. There's a whole flock of them, Joe. All right. It's like six or seven of them. Come, they're coming, they're coming in more. So, so they're trapping. He's using droppers. Which I don't have any droppers. Might have to get a dropper, Joe. <laughs> yeah. Are those what? What are those droppers? Are those racing pigeons? Some type of owl pigeon. You think you can breed me a pair of those droppers? If I breed out of them again. Okay. Might have been just them three. I, they came. They came from around them trees, like. So I didn't really get a good look at them. I caught the tail end of it. Well, How many did you have in the race? Twenty. So that's four then. That's five. Well, one wasn't yours, right? No, that. But that's I got five. Oh, you got five. One by itself. And then that was four right there. Oh man, that's good, man. Blessed day. Right, we'll see how Beautiful. the other guys do. The short guys? Well, I, I got them deep. There you go. I, I believe. Are you the long guy in this race? One of the long guys. One of them. This guy is longer than me, too. Oh, okay. Well, who's longer than you? The guy in Virginia. 
Oh, yeah. No, I said skull. Because I'm, me and you are about the same. It's just I'm a little bit east of you. Yeah, but you're seven miles longer. I'm seven miles longer. And Tommy's like 20 miles shorter, right? No, Tommy's about, I think, seven miles shorter than me. All uh, right, so he's like 14 miles shorter than me. I believe he's 14, I mean seven miles. He's not that much further. So your birds are breaking and coming all the way up here by themselves then? Yeah, unless Leem has one with them. Okay. Leem's 18 miles further than so me. So I'm trying to figure out what bird, who, whose bird you think that is that came with yours. I gotta give it some water and let it go. Yeah. It's a beautiful tree. What kind of tree is this? A uh, peach tree. These are peaches? Yeah. Are they edible? Yeah. I mean, when they get old enough, oh, I can feel the fuzz on them. And plus, the squirrels like eating them. I don't like squirrels. Squirrels, my dog, it drives my dog crazy, the squirrels. They, uh, she thinks she's a squirrel dog. She, she wants to assault them. Hanging out with Joe at the Lily Loft. Racing, racing, race. What race number is this, five? Yeah. Only got two left, right? Yeah. Two. Then we're doing young birds, so. Joe is very, when you hear me talk about Joe, this is who I'm talking about, Joe at Lily Loft. A, good, a really good friend and caring and compassionate person. And I almost stepped in a hole. Well, I did step in a hole, almost went down. No lawsuits. <laughs> no, I'm not, I wouldn't do that, buddy. I'm already disabled, so. I had a sister-in-law who was like that. <laughs> right? Uh, unbelievable. Man, you got some pretty cardinals around here. Oh, you gotta see when there's the whole, the whole yard gets full of them. Have I thought seen? I hit one the other day on the highway and I was so distraught over it. I was like, I just hit a cardinal. And then I didn't realize how plentiful they are down here. Everywhere. Well, I hope you win the race, Joe. Well, I hope I'm up there. Did you send the birds last night to Eric and to Larry? Yeah. Yeah. It worked out too. Yeah, I rolled down there. I didn't. He didn't show up with the bird I was supposed to pick up, but like I said, uh, Mike has some um, okay, so awesome chickens. Too. Barrera? Yep, I think we got birds too, so we'll see. He may have eaten. Um, let me see. That Bingzing Live is worth his money. Oh, yeah. Yep. He got 1388, I got 1377. Yeah. If they didn't hook around. They, you the one. Yeah. But that's good. He's my. Uh, You're in second place. As of now. As of now. That can all change. Well, we're. I'm going to say we. <laughs> we're in second place as of now. But it all can change. Well, he's actually got one, two, three, four birds. He clocked the two minutes after. And how, what's his distance? He's eight miles long. Oh. And Barrera's good competition. He's actually five miles long. He has a good YouTube channel, but it's in Spanish. So I, sometimes I'll watch it, but I can't understand what he's saying. But I still watch it, still support it. Yeah, it's Barrera family something. It, I, I, it, it's in Spanish. He's, he does it in Spanish. But it's a good channel. I just can't understand. I just never. I took arts. I took ceramics in high school instead of Spanish. Because when I was in high school, you didn't have to take a language. You had to take an elective. Of course, now I would have taken a language, Spanish. I would have definitely took Spanish. But, and then I just been lazy by not learning it because I've been in the building supply industry for a long time and a lot of people in that industry are Spanish, a lot of the workers and stuff. And I should have been learning Spanish. I just never, I was too lazy to do it. Uh, when I was growing up in the Bronx, everybody had to take Spanish. 
<laughs> right. Oh, yeah. Half of New York Spanish. Either. And it's funny because Spanish is not even a race. It's a language. So you got the Puerto Ricans. You got Dominicans. You know. Very, people don't understand that most of the um, New Yorkers, they're not actually like... Latinos, like Latin American, they're not like they're not like Central Americans. They're more Puerto Ricans and Dominicans and that type of stuff. Cubans, that type of stuff. They're not the actual Hondurans or Mexicans or uh, Ecuadors and all that. Oh, they are now. Oh, yeah, everywhere. They're everywhere now. Yeah. 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 The home of the everybody, the land of opportunity. America has become. Wow. You know, yeah. My mother's half, uh, my mother's half, huh? Oh, another bird? Yeah, a couple more. A couple more birds coming in. Sorry about the camera work. I'm trying to, I'm not trying to be a distraction to my man's birds trapping in. There they come. They're trapping in. So. Woo! Man, it's always good when they come in. They look really something about pigeons when they land after a race. They're not even sweating, Joe. Two more. Yeah, Chico, that drop of the cock. He yeah. Right there and he keeps them from coming in. Yeah. That's why, that's why I, uh, in my new loft, that was the main reason why I put a drop trap in instead of a, a bob trap because they'll stand right there and block everybody. Yeah, I should have done that. Right, but I, 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 I took the ledge out so they, there's nowhere to stand. Once they drop in the bob trap, they have to go to the floor. Yeah. Uh-oh. So Joe's in second place right now. So 250 mile race, I think. 250 miles, Joe? What's that? The race is 250? 232 to me. 232. And then next week it gets long again, don't it? No, it gets 160 miles, I think. And, and then the last race is long. That's why I got to take it easy. I got to use my head. Uh-huh. Yeah, because I know the Gold Leaf Club, they were complaining, some of their flyers were complaining that their races weren't long enough. They were like, man, this is a young bird races. They don't, I don't, I think they only had one race that was over 400 or 400 miles. Same with us. Yeah. Same. See, the problem here is that you're racing from guys, it's 125 miles to the guys in the west. Right. So they could fly the same distance as me, they're 125 miles there. You know, Barrera, who clocked, he's 50 miles to the west. Okay. Of me. He's right. Seven. He's actually um, five miles longer. But them couple of hooks, that minute flying around. Yeah. That's that race. cost you. Yeah, that, yeah. But you know what? I'm happy because that's my buddy. And um, yeah. The truth is, at least I know my pigeons are doing good. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So that, that's the main thing. That's what I like about pigeon racing, I've noticed is that it's competitive, but there's a lot of camaraderie. People are genuinely happy. If they lose, they're happy for you to win. Oh, they're yeah. not sore. Now you do have haters in every, everything you do. There's disgruntled people. But for the most part, I've noticed that, uh, um, that people are happy. They're genuinely happy that if they lose, they're happy for you. You yeah, know what I mean? I mean? You wanna see people do good. Right, because you want people to be genuinely happy for you. So why not be genuinely happy for them? You know I mean, what I mean? I'm not going to sit here and say I don't win. I, there ain't a pigeon race I fly where I don't want to win. Right. You we know? all want to win. But reality is that ain't going to happen. Look, when I grew up, there was no participation trophies. Yeah. Right? <laughs> we did, well, I'm not from that era where participating is good enough. It's when, like, when you I know. Grew back in, when I started out in 1969, 1970, as right. a kid with my father, my brother, the old time is going to tell you nothing. Okay. Right. They gave you birds. They gave you birds that they caught and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You know, the birds that I give away are yeah. the same birds I'm racing right here. Exactly. You know, they're not, exactly. I'm not 
dumping birds on people. Right. You know, I mean, the truth is I'm going to get rid of some of them, but right. only the ones that don't do good for me. Exactly. You know, the ones that are... Oh, got another, got some more coming in. This is my girl, I figured she would have been here sooner. Oh, okay. She's a little late. She's a little late, huh? Yeah. Maybe she's got an egg in the, her tailpipe. They're good birds, you know what I mean? And it's how you handle them. You gotta have good help. If you don't have good help with your bird, and it takes, you know, sometimes you think you're doing the right thing and you're not. Thin line between doing too much and not enough. So I heard a story yesterday. Um, there was a guy who was training with another guy I'm not gonna say any names. And um, they had uh, uh, birds in the basket. And when he went and released the birds, it was an egg left in the basket. So he took the egg home and slid it under one of his hens, right? Yeah. So the egg ended up hatching out. And he ended up raising the bird up and started racing the bird. And the bird is like one of his best birds. And it was left in the basket by another, another guy's birds. <laughs> you know what I mean? I could tell you stories. And it's like he got, it's, it's like, it's one of his better birds and it's, and it's another guy's egg. <laughs> you know That's what I mean? Mom. And I'm like, what is the rules behind that? Like, is it like, what is, what is that? What is the proper etiquette if something like that happens? <laughs> well, you let the guy know the bird dropped. Most guys will say keep the egg. I mean, oh yeah. I mean, the, the truth is that I've seen guys buy birds in the pet shop. Right. For $5, $10, yeah. and wind up breeding a good bird out of them. I watched this guy's YouTube channel where he sells his pigeons, homing pigeons to the pet shop, and then like a year or two later, they'll show up at his house where somebody had let the pigeon out, and it, it come back to his house, and he takes it back to the pigeon shop and sells it again. It's like a hell of a racket. Yeah, but what are you getting, two, three dollars? I mean, right. Yeah. I mean, it ain't like... Right. The last thing you want, okay, is like the birds that came first today. Yeah. The last thing you want is a, a bird you sold in the store coming home at the same time they're coming home and that kind of stuff happens you know and um you know it's just the way it is you know you got i'd rather give i'm weeding mine out little by little and um i can't say i'm keeping the better ones because if i knew what the better ones were <laughs> right I, I wouldn't need 10 pairs or 12 pairs of pigeons exactly yeah you know? exactly but i'm with you on that i mean you know you got I think a lot of people have good pigeons in their coop. It's just that you got to get to the point where you know what you're doing. Yeah. You know? I can't law fly the birds here because of the hawks. So I take them out and train them. You know? What is that tower thing behind your and behind them trees there? That's the electrical grid. Oh, I, got, I thought I just saw a hawk flying around yeah, over there. They live over there. And they live over here. I got the red tails over here. I mean. That's why, you know, that's one of the main reasons I didn't take birds out of area from other guys. Right. For that special race. I took a couple of guys' birds, but it's hard to sit here and watch a guy's bird get eaten. Yeah. Um, and people got to realize they still got to pay for those birds. You know? Yeah. You got a nice little pocket here, but there is a lot of room for hawks to creep up on over. you. They yeah. are all over. I see a shadow. There's another bird. You trap right on. Well, she was one of the late ones from last week. Yeah. I wasn't gonna send her this week, but um, she's alright. Huh? And that's a baby. Those are late raised ones from last year. Okay. You know, it ain't even like their early bred that. One. But I'm getting tuned up for. I want to put them in the 400 and see how they do. It's impressive to see them when they come singles like that. That means they're flying on their own, don't it? Uh, yeah, there's nobody else out here. Right. Yeah. But, uh, you know, if they, what's impressive is if they win. 
<laughs> yeah, that it did. That's impressive. But, you know, that's all part of the game. Yeah, cause you know, yeah, cause you know, that's why um, Cal was telling me that Captain had to be a really good bird because he was flying like a hundred miles by himself yeah. to get to my loft. Cause I didn't have a race team, I just had him. And uh, man, you live and you learn. Lost him on the last race. All right, we're at 20 minutes, so I'm gonna cut the video. But yeah, I was hanging out with Joe on race day. Uh, make friends, not enemies. God bless you all.